He said 2.5 months. I didn't even realize it's been that long. <laughs> <laughs> I need to figure out what I'm doing one month down the line right now. Uh, so ISP kind of got me out of that uh, whole shell. Time uh, flies so fast here. We already <laughs> started to think about what specializations we want to take. The first class went way above my head. <laughs> Uh, it's sort of like a like the, the blood and veins of ISB is your peers. Welcome to the ISB show. Hey Ayan, hey Shani, what's up? Sabshita, how? how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> going great for me. It's been two point five months, right? Uh, how are you guys feeling? I was a little bit overwhelmed, but I think I'm okay now. <laughs> What about you, Ayan? I think you're faring a little bit better. <laughs> He said 2.5 months. I didn't even realize it's been that long. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. I think it takes about two weeks for me to figure out what that semester is all about. Um, there is panic, there's stress <laughs> for the first week of every semester. Then I realize what I'm supposed to do, and then I'm fine. Do you overthink a lot? Oh, I do. I yeah. do. Uh, that's, that's just <laughs> me as a person. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm like I'm winging it. Like I'm like okay. The term is like few days from now. I'll ask my friends. They'll tell me what what to do, and then I'll take it from there basically. But I'm, so I'm, I'm even. See, a diversity in experiences also. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm a person who needs structure in her life. I need to figure out what I'm doing one month down the line right now. Uh, so ISP kind of got me out of that uh, whole shell, and now I know how to do things on the fly. <laughs> Yeah, I had to get better at that because you need some of that at ISB for sure. Yeah. So the thing is, I I managed to structure all my academic work properly, uh, at least a few weeks in advance. But then other than that, I make sure like I'm playing sports every day. So I try and get some music in as much as possible. So I'm quite happy. I'm having a good, really good time here. I think uh, every evening on the frisbee group, you see one message from my aunt, <laughs> <laughs> and every alternate day you see him playing on the field. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Is the national sport of ISB. It's right? been. Oh, <laughs> we'll talk about that later as well. Like it's it's been amazing. I've seen so many people playing so much so that uh, a lot of people are injured also. Yeah, it's just oh. the age gets to you as well. So <laughs> talk about yourself, Ayan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. I think uh, let's get a bit more serious and uh, maybe discuss a few changes to the curriculum. It's been updated, and the latest curriculum is slightly different from. what we have been there what has been there for the lot of uh, previous batches sure so please uh, sure yeah. you want to take this yeah sure sure i cool. can take this all right i think uh, the earlier batches before us had about 8 semesters uh, in this entire year of transformation now we have changed this pattern a little bit from our batch onwards there will be about 7 semesters plus a concept that is newly minted here which is called a block week Now, what is block week exactly? As all of us now know, that subjects will be taught to us in one one week, and there'll be four such weeks. So that means that there'll be a month um, of such quick and fast paced learning for these short short term courses. Mm. Another thing that they have done is given us space and flexibility in our schedule. So what used to happen earlier is in core terms. we didn't have the option of choosing which subjects we wanted but now right from the beginning right from term 2 we can select flexi core courses where we pick and choose the subjects as per our specialization as per where we want to go in life which i think is a great great option because it's letting me build my profile and tell my story in a way that i want to right from the start Yeah, do you yeah. think you can talk us uh, through take us through a little bit more about what are these flexi courses yeah, what yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, courses sure, sure. that are there in the flexi course absolutely kind of absolutely that? like but like ishani said yeah. there are cores which are not mandatory for everybody so you can pick and choose uh, i think the way they divided it this term was um, term 2 was a focus on uh, an external influence on a firm or a decision so we've had a uh, uh macroeconomics we've had frontier technologies which is super cool right now we talk about ai ml and all that uh we have one more called which i don't i haven't taken it it's called bsns i don't know the full form of it i think business it's business society, society and non market non-market strategies. Strategies. market strategies right so like how the external environment impacts your decision making right. uh, basically though so that's been an external view next term we have it from a ground up analytics perspective so the flexi course i've taken are uh, business analytics mixed with marketing analytics and uh, a core which i'm really excited for which is called the art and science of decision making so it's a lot of organizational psychology uh, leadership how biases affect decision making and things like that 
So having that option to choose based on either what your interests are, um, where you want to see yourself applying these in your professional career, I, I've really enjoyed them so far. Oh, there's also another really interesting course coming up next term, which is, I think, prescriptive uh, analytics <laughs> decision making. Pardon. Previously, erstwhile DMOP. Erstwhile DMOP. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. DMOP. Yeah. Not sure if you guys know about that. but <laughs> <laughs> So now you have the flexibility of A, either not choosing it if you're not comfortable with it or going for it if you want to go for, say, an ops based role. Yeah. It's a really, really interesting subject. But now you have the option of deciding what to do with it. It's the so most yeah. dreaded subject at ISB. <laughs> well, let's yeah. not tell our viewers that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think ISB has given me the safe space to experiment. And I come from a humanities background. Mm. I have no connection with either commerce, uh, accounting, finance, or optimization, numbers, quants. <laughs> yeah, fair. But in th term three, I have uh, decided to choose uh, managerial accounting and uh, decision making and optimization subject. Damn. So, Quant heavy. <laughs> very heavy. I have no idea. I don't want to get into finance or I, I don't want to get into ops, but I really want to try and experiment this. Yeah. So Flexi course is not just about avoiding a few subjects, but also about trying out new things, yeah. which ISB really wants us to do. So, We're going to be holistic leaders at the end of the day, right? So Absolutely. Expand so, your prof broad horizons while you can. <laughs> <laughs> so Shritam also decided to focus on the learning aspect of it, which is great. Yeah. So you can choose to focus on learning or choose to focus on your profile the way you want or tailor, make it to a very, very specific function. You can choose to do whatever you want at ISB, I think, which is, it's USB, yeah. which is great. It's been good so yeah. far, yeah. yeah. But I think time... Uh, fly so fast here we already <laughs> started to think about what specializations we want to take so tell us our viewers a little bit more about what kind of specializations are offered at isb and uh, what kind of industry specializations uh, are also are offered at isb so there are different functional and industry specializations offered at isb now you have the option of choosing a maximum of two functional specializations by functional ones i mean you can choose to specialize in finance in marketing, in operations, uh, in strategy, in IT, and so on and so forth. Also, you can choose to specialize in one industry. Uh, industry could be healthcare, um, it could be public policy, it could be infrastructure, so on and so forth. So while you've been given this option, it is not mandatory. So what this gives me is the flexibility to pick and choose and decide if I want to focus on specializing in one core aspect or focus on doing multiple things and learning across the board of different specializations offered by yeah. ISB. Because we have, we have definitely we have people who, who know where they want to be, uh, either through a functional perspective or an industry perspective. Uh, like we have a friend here who's from the healthcare space and he's taken his profile as a doctor to go back into medical business, right? So it's a clear path like that. Fantastic. But there's people like me who have really no clue. So... Uh, Making that, having that decision to like take these subjects and then figure it out along the way is something that ISB prides itself on. And that's one of the reasons I chose to come here for sure. I think for these industry specializations, we also have dedicated research centers. Uh, I remember there's one Max Institute of Health, uh, Healthcare. There is Bharti Institute of Public Policy. Both of them are in the Mohali campus. Okay. So inside ISB, there are multiple research nice. and institutions uh, which facilitate learning for these specializations. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, let's get a little bit more into the specifics of your experiences. Sure. Ishani, I believe you're from the commerce background. Right. Right. So what do you think was the most difficult subject till now for you? And how was, how was it delivered to you? How did you learn? So coming from a commerce background, um, in the first sem, we had four subjects. So they were broadly eco, um, accountancy, there was statistics, and there was something called as LSAT, which is... Uh, related leadership and self-development. Now, I was broadly okay with all other three, except for one dreaded subject, which was statistics for me. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> Having probably a very basic prior exposure to this, I didn't know what I was walking into. And since ISB focuses and prides itself on its academic rigor, I understood what it meant when I entered that first class. The first class went way above my head. <laughs> and for the first week, I didn't know how I would cope up. But there was a concept called as pre-reads and study groups and peer learning. These concepts helped me a lot. So what is pre-reads? Basically, we get certain case books 
and certain materials to prep from prior to classes to enable us to understand the discussions better. So while the professors do guide you and facilitate the discussions, it always helps if I have some background on that. Additionally, a lot of my peers have come from statistic background. So there is a girl in my class who's in fact done a double major in economics and statistics. <laughs> she was in the best position to guide me for both of these subjects. For sure. I think had it not been for her, uh, I would not be sitting here <laughs> <laughs> easily chatting with you guys. <laughs> but I think the peer set that is present here, it's unparalleled. I yeah. mean, this is what sails your boat here at ISB. Yeah. And this is what helped me pass my exams and do them, hopefully, reasonably well uh, in term one as well. Uh, what was it like for you? I think you have five years of experience. I have five years of yeah, experience, yeah. yeah. So and you've studied economics. Yeah, I did worked economics. Worked in finance, <laughs> such a diverse profile. <laughs> is is the academics even helping you here? No, no, no. <laughs> no, it no. is, for sure it is. It is. It's helping a lot. Uh, no, but the thing is, the misconception is that you have a lot of work ex, so like academics might feel... Uh, like less useful for you but that's th th entirely the opposite like I came here because there were aspects of my work and study that I did not think were as exciting or interesting back when I was actually doing them so uh, there's been two issues uh, from my experience which I can talk about I studied economics in undergrad and I'm sure a lot of us know that undergrad studying can be slightly bookish so the, the course delivery itself back then was very, you know, textbook theory, making models and whatnot, but it wasn't foundational. It wasn't uh, applicative. It wasn't practical. Uh, from a workplace perspective, like I worked in uh, at a Deutsche Bank, but over there I was, I was, you know, carrying out the run the bank stuff, doing stuff on a daily basis without really understanding to a core level why this happens, what, what we're doing this for, right? The foundational learning wasn't there. So... Over here, when I take a finance class, right, it goes down to the very grassroots level of what even makes a person want to save, right? That, that's been, you know, it's opened my brain up to how we build up finance logic from the very beginning. Um, so that's been really good. And the learning itself, let's say, if I'm learning economics at, at ISB, it's uh, in the macro, for example, it's a, it's, it's a three-part lecture, you know, that a professor takes, right? Where he talks, shows us examples from the real world, what, what is happening right now, then tailors it back to how it applies to the theory. And then there's a forward-looking aspect. He'll ask us a question in class, which we'll either prepare a debate on or an assignment, which makes us link these models to things that are we're seeing around us. So uh, that way, like, it's been great. It's one of the reasons I picked ISB as well, because of this learning delivery has been super cool. I think uh, we both are in the same section for macro. Yeah, we're in the same macro and, class. Uh, a professor from New York University teaches us. Uh, yeah. He's a Spanish professor, so he brings in so much diverse perspectives of uh, Europe, of the Americas, and also talks about India. And he teaches through news articles. I think yeah, he, yeah. his exam, exactly. yeah, he teaches get a newspaper. through news articles. And you see India from a different lens as yeah. well. So you're getting diverse set of perspectives from your peers and from your professors who may be from India or abroad from renowned universities. Yeah. So you're really getting the best of both worlds here. Oh, I forgot about one point as well. The thing is the industry knowledge, right? If you want to connect with people from your, you know, your field or a field that you don't know about, we have the professional clubs as well, right? So, so exactly. So we have professional clubs here at ISB, uh, which are basically, yeah, for example, marketing club, finance club, consulting club. And it's, uh, it's open to invitation. You can go for any events for any of these clubs to sort of build that last mile knowledge about an industry and get some more hands-on experience, which the classroom may not be able to give you. So if you, I think the professional clubs are meant to facilitate placements or career development. Mm. So I think whatever career you want, uh, you have some club dedicated yeah, to it. Yeah, pretty you much. want an impact consulting club, you have a consulting club. And uh, you also have public policy club. You want a healthcare uh, career? Yeah. There is healthcare club. Even though those, even though the professional clubs are student driven, I very much think they are part of the pedagogy here at ISB. Absolutely, yeah. there are even industry related clubs. For example, uh, retail and e-commerce club, yeah. which is I think the second biggest or the third biggest. It's pretty club big. They have an event today as well. I'm going to try making it for that yeah, in the yeah, evening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think my biggest problem was in selecting which club I want because there are so many out there. Oh. <laughs> 
I come from a consulting background, so I knew consulting was it. But then there is BTC, there is retail, there is marketing, there is industry specific, function specific clubs. Yeah. You just do not know what to choose. That's the hardest part here. Is like choosing choosing one thing is you get decision paralysis. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but when I was an aspirant, I heard this concept of study groups or SGs. Oh, uh, tell us a bit more about it. I mean, we have different perspectives about SGs, but yeah, let's try. I mean, some of us may have had the concepts of SGs before also in our undergrads, but here in SG is your family. What it is, is a group of four to five students, um, at least for the core terms, your SG remains the same. So these students help you learn together. And also you're supposed to do assignments in your SGs together for the core terms at least. Yeah, pretty with much. With those yeah. set of three, four people. Yeah. Now the way SGs are constructed in ISP is... Amazing, I would say. Why is that so? Is because there'll be adequate number of engineers, uh, people from finance backgrounds, fee- people from economics backgrounds put together in one SG. So you're never at a disadvantage. Whichever subject comes at you, you're rest assured that there is somebody who will teach you how to do it, who will guide you through it, who will sit with you at 12 a.m. in the <laughs> night and help you learn the concepts. 12 is under- understanding. <laughs> <laughs> I remember both of us were sitting with our SGs in the atrium oh God. <laughs> at around 3.30 a.m. in the morning yeah, yeah. doing our assignments. So SG is not just your professional support and your assignment group. It is your emotional support in ISB as well. It is your family. And I think there's nothing better that could offer here because you could have people from an eight years work ex naval background and a 2.5 years work ex consulting background sitting yeah. together and figuring out a finance problem uh, on their own. Yeah, so yeah. the diversity is mind, mind blowing here. Yeah, diversity in terms of, uh, I think the uh, gender ratio this year is even better than it was in the past, right? Like, I don't know what the numbers are. Like, I remember the numbers. Uh, what are they? Marketing. Uh, marketing. <laughs> you admissions. should know, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, 53% men and uh-huh. 47% uh, women. It's pretty good, yeah. And even for non-engineers and engineers, it's roughly 50-50, I think 49-51 or something like that. Nice, You nice. cannot find such diversity at any yeah. other B-school apart from ISB in India. Yeah. And uh, let's not even club the, all the non-engineers into in, non-engineers into one category. There are people who are from humanities like me, yeah. people from psychology, people from philosophy, people from public policy, mm-hmm. people from sciences, life sciences, yeah. Yeah, yeah. medicine. So a lot of diversity. Super cool, yeah. And it's pretty much visible in all our armed SGs forces too. as well. We have armed forces personnel exactly, on campus. Exactly. So yeah. many people from armed Super forces. Super interesting. It's been. Uh, you hear their stories like. You have done nothing below. Yeah, so like you mentioned, the peer-to-peer learning really sort of binds it all together, right? When the delivery happens through your content and all the other resources, uh, it's sort of like a like the, the blood and veins of ISB is your peers. Yeah, so it's been good. I think I in my interacted with, I think, architects, lawyers, people from the Coast Guard here. <laughs> That's the sort of people you never meet otherwise outside. Yeah, yeah. So it's really opened up my network also. Mm. It's, it's really helped me in that way. Yeah, seriously. It's been good. Right now, uh, the LRC, as we all call it, it's a, it's, it's a library, first and foremost. But uh, alongside that, it's a center for resources, mm. um, accesses to basically a bunch of software, news. Um, what else can I say? There's a uh, yeah. Bloomberg lab, right? Okay. Yeah, for yeah, right exactly. So there's the a studio, yeah. you get access to Bloomberg, you get a, access to a, a software called Capital IQ, which is basically financial information across the globe. I think we have access to more than thousand plus resources, magazines. It's thousand. Oh, it's wow. more than wow. thousand for sure, Capital and Bloomberg. a lot of them are extremely premium. Yeah. I remember uh, there's this uh, research company called Euromonitor. Hmm. Uh, it makes re- research reports on various markets so i remember for a case comp uh, before coming to isb mm. for a pepsi core case comp i had to connect with an isb alum who shared a research report which was for thousand bucks thousand dollars yeah not even rupees thousand dollars research for free yeah uh, so isb definitely gives you very much quality access to a lot of resources also contrary to what we might think of a library as a place filled with just books, which it also is, by the way. It's three floors of books, guys, by the way. (laughs) It's also this amazing studio. Yeah. So there's a trading lab. There's the studio where we are doing this right now. So it's not just books. There's so much more to offer. I mean, 
you the just end up yeah, yeah. there yeah. Uh, the help with case comps that you get yeah. that's also that you send one email out and you have all the resources in your finger i have friends who lived on statista here as well so yeah, yeah not just that like i re- we have grammarly for free and stuff like that yeah, as well yeah, all so all these small things have been really useful Very from useful. the lrc access we have access to washington post new york times the ken the ken i, I, I got nyt and ken f- for sh- <laughs> i got those like first thing <laughs> so many things that yeah, yeah. we offer not to mention that like uh, it's a nice place to be so a lot of students just end up, end up camping out here in the lrc to study uh, you know to focus when you need a place where you, you need to put your thoughts aside and really get work done it's been it's a good place to also be also during our assignments we're not running around trying to find information yeah. we have that we just have to analyze yeah so it's it's a really yeah, cutting right the effort. mail to lrc you tell them that i want this market research they'll give it to you easily mm-hmm. easily and within like 5 6 hours so isb is really supportive in terms of facilitating your learning yeah i think lrc also has this uh, breakout rooms where you can yeah. go and study <laughs> then there is uh, long tables where you demand for those is high though so if you're lucky you'll get a booking <laughs> there otherwise you'll have to negotiate with another group uh, that, so is, that, is, that is that is just on <laughs> the wait list that's only during exams yeah that's true. Pretty, I, I, i'm at the lrc almost all the yeah. all the time yeah. i'm doing my assignments i'm studying your during exams it's really packed but uh, in normal hours now a lot of rooms are empty no one is Good, here yeah. <laughs> and i like that it has white boards as well so you end up having mini yeah. lectures within <laughs> your study groups one P2P person will take yeah p2p, P2P sessions, sessions within the lrc is, is a good combo yeah i think i think we have covered almost all the topics uh, about uh, let's request all of our aspirants and everyone viewing us to come and uh, uh, come back to our channel look for more videos upcoming videos about the essays yeah. gmat gre yeah. and the application process interviews etc so yeah please subscribe like comment and subscribe <laughs> that's cliche you do yeah, and no fair enough and come here and experience this yourself yes ah, please yes. do yeah yes yes so amazing video thank you so much ethan